Hamidakiapi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lakota language mini lesson 18. Something I did not mention in the previous video because I didn't want to scare anybody away <laughs> is that in Lakota language there are three conjugation processes. And what I talked about in mini lesson 17 was the BL conjugation process. And in this video, I will discuss a second process of conjugation. And you will see how it works as I describe it. Okay? So, let's start with the word techi. This means to be difficult. And in Lakota language, when you add the suffix, that's uh, something that goes at the end of the word. When you add the suffix la, it makes the word like cute or something that's endearing, something you love, something that is nice, sweet, in your opinion. <laughs> make it like that okay so what we're gonna do is add that suffix la to tehi and we get the word tehila which means to love look at that how that changes yeah <laughs> tehi means to be difficult and then when we put that sweet suffix of la at the end suddenly it, the definition changes from to be difficult to to love. So tehila, it's like a sweet difficulty. <laughs> and for those of you who have years and years of experience of romance, <laughs> maybe you kind of know what I mean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, seriously. That's, <laughs> it's hard to be serious when saying love is difficult, yeah? <laughs> uh, okay, let's try to, let me try to talk sens sensibly here. Okay, let's just focus on this word tehila. Tehila, it means to love. Now, if you would like to say, I love... Then you're going to add something to this word. And look on the screen and look at what just happened. You add wa. You see that in the light blue letters. This wa means I in this conjugation system. Okay? So to say I love, you just add a wa. In the word, and you get the word tewahila. Anytime I say a Lakota word or a Lakota sentence, please pay really close attention to how I'm saying it, and then you say it the same way. So let's say these words. Say the first one, tehila. The accent is on the second syllable, chi. Okay, it's a guttural H sound. In the previous lessons, I said that just imagine you're getting ready to spit, but you don't complete it. Yeah, so you go like that. That's the guttural H. And since you're on lesson 18, you should be an expert at this by now if you started from mini lesson 1. Okay? Jeez, how many months have we been doing this now? I don't, I don't really remember. Okay. <laughs> okay, so repeat after me, please. Tehila. One more time. Tehila. Very good. That means to love. Now let's say the word for I love. Repeat after me, please. Tewahila. One more time. Tewahila. Very good. So you see the accent 
still stays on the second syllable even though that guttural H moved up a little bit yeah the accent stays on the second syllable in this word okay so this wa is I that you see on the screen that's the subject and the rest of the word is the verb so in one Lakota word we have two things we have the subject I and the verb love so Tewahila, I love. Whatever it is you love, you say that word first. Okay, so for example, fry bread. The Lakota word for fry bread is wigli unkahapi. So you would say that first, and then tewahila. So the sentence would be. Wigli unkahapi tewahila. That means I love fry bread. We'll make it a simpler sentence. Let's say wojapi. This is like a a dessert. It's a traditional kind of dessert. It kind of looks like a syrup or a thick soup, which is made of choke cherries traditionally. And sometimes with plums or whatever berries that are growing at that time of the year. It's very tasty. Yeah, the traditional way. It's very tasty. Today, people just buy a can of blueberries and put a bunch of sugar in it and some pieces of white bread and boil it up. And that's what they eat. That's really unhealthy. Yeah, for one thing, the canned blueberries has preservatives up the wazoo, and using a whole bag of sugar, it's not good. <laughs> but the traditional way has no sugar in it. Yeah, it's using the sugar from the berries. I grew up eating the traditional kind of wojapi, so I could say wojapi tewahila. Yeah, like that. If you're not sure how to say the word in Lakota, try to find a Lakota dictionary and look it up. And then then you have that, okay? Remember, a dictionary is good for looking up words, but it's not good for learning to speak the language. When you learn to speak the language, you really need to learn these conjugation processes, okay? And that's what we're talking about in this video. So, tewahila. I love. So whatever it is that you love, you say that first, and then you say tewahila. Like the sentence I created here. Wojapi tewahila. So the subject and the verb go at the end of the sentence. As long as the subject is inside the verb, then the whole thing goes at the end. Okay, that's grammar. Don't worry about that. I'm just introducing this process of how a word can transform and add things to it. Okay, so tehila to love and tewahila, I love. And again, the wa, which is inside the word tewahila, means I. The wa is I. Very good. Now, in this word, you see that the wa is inside of the word. Now, it's not always going to be like that. Sometimes the wa will be at the beginning. Sometimes the wa will be towards the end. Sometimes the wa will be at the end. Okay? There really is no rule on that. So you just have to learn the process when you learn a new word. When you learn a new word, you find out where does the wa go in that word if it is a wa conjugation because remember I said there are three processes last mini lesson we talked about one that was the BL conjugation in this lesson we're talking about the wa conjugation and maybe in the future I'll talk about the third process and don't worry there's just three okay and once you get those down once you learn those three Lakota is really going to become easy for you.
to speak and to learn. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now let's add a third thing to this word. Yeah, so far we have two things, the subject and the verb. I is a subject, love is the verb. We have these two things in one Lakota word, tewahila. Now let's add a third thing. I love you. And look at how that transforms. You see that? The wa transforms to a chi. The C with the circle over it and the, the letter I. You see that? It happened in the same location. So tewahila, which means I love, transforms into techihila, which means I love you. This chi means the subject I and something called an indirect object you. Okay, and don't worry about those terms, okay, the grammar terms. Just know that it's I and you in this word. And really, it's a sentence, yeah? One Lakota word is a sentence in English. Imagine that. So, techihila means I love you. Again, the accent is still on the second syllable. Techihila. Let's say this word. Repeat after me, please. Techihila. One more time. Techihila. Very good. Very, very good. Now, this is a very beautiful expression, as you can imagine. For those of you who are in love and like to say this all the time. And even if you're alone, practice saying it for the future. Yeah, Use it as a type of visualization. Or look in the mirror. Because you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. So look in the mirror. If you're alone, look in the mirror and say this to yourself. I love you. Because you are a nice person. You are worth it. Chechihila, you can say. And that's going to influence something to happen in the future. Something wonderful to happen in the future to you. So, you can use this word as a visualization. That's one of the really cool things about Lakota language is that sometimes when you say things, you can influence something to happen. And to say something like this, and inside of yourself, Think of peace, think of wonderful things, healthy things, and this actually can put something in motion that will cause something really nice to happen to you in the future. It works. Believe me, I use it myself, so I know. Anywho, techihila, very beautiful expression. Okay, now if you want to make this into future tense, and I don't know why a person would say that, <laughs> but let's just see how it's done anyway, okay? <laughs> I will love you. I don't right now, but I will. <laughs> Uh, she doesn't even make sense. But <laughs> let's look at the process anyway. Look at look on the screen. All we did was add the K T E at the end. Kte. This is future tense. It makes a word or a sentence into future tense. So you would say techihilakte. I will love you. <laughs> No, we're not going to say this word. <laughs> I just wanted to show you how you would future tense it, okay? That's all. <laughs> I will love you. I don't right now, but I will. <laughs> Eventually, I will. <laughs> That's for you goofy guys, okay? <laughs> You goofy guys with very understandable partners. 
uh, with very understanding partners. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't even know why I put that on there, but <laughs> I wasn't even thinking. I guess that's what love does to you, yeah? You don't think right. <laughs> Ah, shucks. <laughs> Let's continue on. We can still do another type of conjugation to this word and come up with a extraordinary expression. Tekichi Love one another. So now let's look at how this transforms. First we had the word tehila, which means to love. Then we added a wa in there to get the word tewahila, which means I love. And look at how that continues to transform into techihila. The wa changes to chi. And we get the word techihila, which means I love you. And now look at what happens next. We have that chi. It then transforms into Gichi. You see how that happens? Actually, we just added a Gi to it because the Chi is still in there. And then we come up with the word Tegichihila. And that means love one another. Again, the accent is on the second syllable. Tegichihila. Let's say that word. Repeat after me, please. Tegichihila. One more time. Tegichihila. Very good. So, listen to how I say all four words. And notice how I keep the accent always on that second syllable. Okay, so just listen closely. Tehila, Tewahila, Techihila, Tegichihila. You hear how I always keep that accent on the second syllable. Okay, most of the time that's how it's going to be in Lakota. But there's always going to be exceptions. Just keep that in mind. So, this last word is very powerful. A lot of times people will say this at the end of speeches or prayers or any kind of special event. It's really a powerful expression. And it's a good thing to say because it's influencing healthy energy to flow out. So when you say this, you're encouraging others to send love towards everything, including one another. Okay? So it's a very powerful expression. Now, usually when saying this expression, they use the gender endings at the end of the expression because this is a very special expression. So, you see on the screen, women end it with the word ba and men end it with the word bo. It's the only difference. Other than that, it's said the same way. Okay, it's just that last word. It's the what's called a gender ending. This is a plural gender ending because we're talking to a group of people. We're talking to everybody. Love one another. So it's plural. So, all women, repeat after me, please. Tekichihilape. Very good. One more time. Tekichihilape. Very, very good. Next, all men, repeat after me, please. 
Tekichilapo. Very good. One more time. Tekichilapo. Very, very good. So, we learned a little bit more grammar. And I know in the beginning it's always a little bit difficult. Don't worry about that. The key is to look at it again and again and again. Yeah? Just keep looking at it and examining it. And eventually you will see things that you didn't see before meaning you'll understand it more and more okay so I encourage you to watch this video again and again to try to see how this is working this is just an introduction to the wall conjugation system there's more conjugations in this system but I'm just giving you a little sneaky peeky if you will yeah just a little sneaky peek to give you an idea of how this works and if you want to learn more of this then I invite you to my online lessons to enroll in my online sessions the information is in the description of the video okay for those of you who are watching this in the smartphone I believe on the right side where the title is, just to the right of the title, there's a triangle. When you press that, then the description opens up, and then you see some links there and stuff. Okay? And for those of you who are watching this on the computer, underneath the title on the bottom of the video, it says something like show more, click that, and then the same information appears okay if you want to learn more about this but really this is the key to learning how to speak Lakota language it's this conjugation process and I don't like that word because it really makes it sound clinical technical yeah eh, boarding school word <laughs> phooey <laughs> but disregard the name don't worry about that what is important is learning how to do this process okay so again this is just an introduction to the wa conjugation process and there's one more conjugation process i'll talk about that in a future video so just keep these in mind and but like i said there's only three conjugation systems and that really is the key to learning to speak this language so don't let that scare you though just start with baby steps and and slowly you'll get it watch this video again practice 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 and don't let the frustration scare you away because that's a part of life whenever we try something that we're really looking forward to and it didn't start like we thought it would then we have that tendency to say oh that's not for me that's i'm gonna quit <laughs> and when we do that we're probably passing up a really good opportunity so don't give up okay just hang in there i remember when i first started to learn to play electric guitar my fingers hurt and i just couldn't get it and so and I think I was about eight or nine years old and I just refused to play it and then my uncle came to visit he's kind of a funny guy and he asked me if he could look at my guitar so I said okay so he took a look at it picked it up and started playing Johnny Cash I walked the line and, and some other songs too he was really strumming away and my jaw dropped to the floor and I was like, huh? <laughs> I was totally shocked. I, I have never have known this guy to be musical. <laughs> this was the last thing I would have expected him to be able to do. And when he got done playing, he said, yeah, you're, you have a pretty good guitar, he said. 
And I said, how did you do that? And he, he said, no, it's, you just have to, don't stop. Why are you not playing? He said. So I told him the strings hurt my fingers. So he showed me his fingertips. And he said, feel that, he said. And it was rough, yeah? These were calluses. And he said, just keep playing. He said, in the beginning, it's going to hurt. And your fingers, the skin might tear or something. Just keep it clean, but keep your strings clean and just keep playing. And eventually you'll get these calluses too. And so I followed his advice and that was, my goodness, almost 50 years ago. And I'm still playing guitar. And I'm so thankful for that meeting. Yeah, I'm so thankful for that event of him playing my guitar that... I would have missed a lot of things if I just have given up. So don't give up, is what I'm saying. I know this process seems scary, but the more you do it, the more familiar it becomes, the easier it becomes, and then it becomes a part of you. Okay? And it is really worth it. And your ancestors are really cheering you on and your descendants are going to be really thankful to you for not giving up, okay? I'm saying this is a special message for those of you who are native and, and are part Lakota and Dakota or Nakota, okay? So don't give up. And for those of you who are not native, I encourage you to don't give up too. It's a beautiful language, yeah? And it could really influence a lot of things because there's a lot of power in the language. There's a lot of beauty in the language. I know you can say that about a lot of languages, but Lakota is a very special language. When you go into a ceremony or you hear a song in Lakota, even if you don't understand it, it does something to you emotionally. Grabs your heart and hugs you. Yeah, that's the beauty of the language. So to speak like that it's gonna take a little time but you will get there because it has so much power it's not easy in the beginning but life is that way yeah sometimes things are not so easy in the beginning and we just hang in there as best as we can take a little break do something you like to do then come back to it again and try it again just keep doing that. It will come to you. But you have to do your part, okay? By not giving up. Okay? All right. So thank you very much for listening to this mini lesson, being a part of it. It's really fun. And eventually we'll get back to the dialoguing because that's really the main reason why I'm doing these videos is the dialoguing. But in these dialogues, there are conjugations in there. And so it, you can even go back to watching some of the older videos and you'll see that. Now we have Wati. Duktel Yati he. Where do you live? Yati, you live. Then I could answer Berlin, L W A T. I I live at Berlin, W A T. I I live. There's that W A. You see, it's at the beginning of the word. I'm using the W A conjugation there. So that's why I'm introducing it, okay? It's a very, very important key in speaking and learning to speak the Lakota language. So don't give up. Just keep going. I'm encouraging you. I'm on your side. The ancestors are cheering you on. And your descendants will be so thankful for you that you didn't give up. They will be so thankful to you that you didn't give up. Keep that in mind. Life is a circle. Oh, huh. Until we meet the next time. Doksha Ake. To learn more about speaking the Lakota language, you can read my book called Chante et Anho Ooglake, Speaking from the Heart. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about 
on my Lakota language mini lesson videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking that link will open up the description below, and there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link, and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.